She's bringing the trailer park lifestyle to the world. Come inside, don't be shy, cause Jolene can't wait to meet ya. She's the queen of the park, she's got gossip news and lots of food to feed ya. Jolene Sugar Baker, Jolene Sugar Baker is one budget minded girl. Lots of cheap fashion is the passion at the park, the passion at the park, the passion at the park. Dropping in on neighbors is all part of Jolene's world. Jolene Sugar Baker, she's the trailer park queen. Trailer Park fans, it's Jolene Sugarbaker, the Trailer Park Queen, and welcome to the Trailer Park Taste Kitchen. I'm doing a little something different today, and I've been working on a hobby, a new hobby, and that's canning things, and I've been making jams and jellies, and you know, a lot of people have been wanting to do this, but they're kind of scared to do it, and you know, I have to say that I'm not an expert on canning, and you know, whether you're getting ready for the zombie apocalypse or whether you just want to save money on food or save things in your garden, canning is a great way for that. And it's just an old-fashioned way of doing things. Look at that. Look how pretty that jam is. This is strawberry jam that I did earlier in the week. And canning is actually really easy and all you need is the proper supplies. And I've got a canning pot here that I got at one of the big box stores and it only cost me about $20. And then I have another pot here. I just bought that one at a regular store and that's what we're going to be boiling some lids in and here just shortly. And this is one that you saw me uh, cook my casseroles in. This is the one that we're going to be putting together our jam in today. And like I said, I'm not an expert on this, but a lot of people wanted to take a look at what I've been doing because I've been wanting to make jams and jellies for the longest time and I just dove in today and I'm like, I'm going to show you all how I do it. And I've got everything set up here today and we're going to be making a apple kind of jam. It kind of borders on apple butter, but it really isn't. It's called Dutch Apple Jam, and it has raisins and taste of like allspice, and um, it's just a really sweet jam that's great on biscuits or bread. And this is an up close shot today, um, so you can see what I'm actually doing. So um, it's a little different from what I normally do, but I hope you like it. And they're mowing the lawn outside. I don't know what they're doing out there, so it's kind of crazy in the trailer park today. So step on inside today while I teach you how to can a great Dutch apple jam. I'll be right back. Welcome back. Today we're going to be making the Dutch apple jam in mason jars that are 8 ounces or they're called half pints and I'm taking the lids off. There's lids and actually rings which we'll see in just a moment. But what we're going to do is put these into our canner while we're working on the jam part and I've actually just taken these out of the dishwasher. They're kind of hot. Um, if you don't have a dishwasher um, you're going to have to wash them in hot soapy water first. But what we're doing is this is actually not really sterilizing them just yet. But we're trying to heat them up so they don't crack when we put the hot jam in them. So I've got this up just a little bit, the canner, um, actually the canner water. And um, we've got this thing. This is actually what they sit on. And it's got two levels. And this kind of brings it out of the water. We're going to place ten of those into the water and you might have to add a little water to make them sit properly um, but we're going to need 10 and we're going to uh, put them in the water while we work on the jam and that's about 10 to 12 minutes just to heat up so they don't crack that's a big problem with the actual jars um, it doesn't happen very often um, but it's just something that you need to be concerned about so I'm going to put 10 in here and then lower them down for uh, while we work on the jam 10 12 minutes is usually how long it takes you to make the jam so uh, but they're okay if they stay in there for a while 
Next up, in your sink or a large like basin, you're gonna put some hot water and some soap there, and you're gonna take the lid that you took off the actual jars and place those into the hot soapy water. Then you're gonna scrub and make sure that they're really clean, and then of course rinse them off and dry them and set them aside on perhaps a cookie tray or something like that yet. And then I'm gonna show you what you do with them in just a moment. Okay, here are the rings that came with the jars. You actually don't have to really sanitize these in the hot water, but we rinsed these off and dried them, and I put them on a cookie sheet, and I'm gonna put some plastic wrap on them to keep them sanitary until we need them. So set these aside for now. So now you have your other pot here that's not your canning pot. What you're gonna do is sanitize the lids in the hot water. And actually this is simmering and while you're making the jam, it's gonna be like 10 or 12 minutes um, to make that. So that's gonna be plenty of time. Um, you don't want boiling water, you just want to simmer. So just go ahead and place the lids down on into the water and um, just let them stay there until you need them. Okay, the first thing about canning is you gotta keep everything clean and you gotta be ready for everything. So we've got all our equipment set up, but the next thing to do is set up all your ingredients to make the jelly. And I've got that over here on the side. It's all set up. I'm gonna work on the other things here in just a moment. And that is two tablespoons of lemon juice. And I use a little strainer um, to make sure that it uh, doesn't have any of the pulp in there, um, but you need two tablespoons of that, so I'm gonna work on that. And today we're gonna be using the Granny Smith, their tart apples today, and we're gonna peel these, we're gonna core these, and we're gonna either grate or grind these. I don't know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go do this off camera and have them ready. But we're actually gonna need four cups of grated or grind, uh, grinded, I think that's the word, of apples. So we're going to have that ready too with the lemon juice and all the other ingredients. And we're going to be using my casserole pint to actually make the jam part uh, today. So I'm going to go get the apple and the lemon uh, ready and um, I have my other ingredients set out. You can look at the ingredients down at the bottom so you can have them all set out because I'm just going to start adding them inside the pot here as they go in and uh, tell you how they go in. So let me go get this started and I'll be right back. As I said, everything needs to be sanitary. So I like to take these big glass, um, actually pitchers and put hot water in it and then microwave it to boiling. You don't want to microwave it with the utensils because then you'll get fireworks and that won't be pretty in your trailer. But then I take all my metal utensils and then just stick them right there in the boiling water and I keep them on the side and maybe not drop the one on the floor. That's why you need to sanitize everything. Um, so I'm gonna start at the beginning with that piece and put it in the boiling water and set this aside um, so they're ready for me to use when I'm actually making the jam and actually canning. Okay, we're back and here comes the fun part. We're gonna be making our Dutch apple pie jam now. It actually goes in the jar. What I did is I used a food processor and I chopped up a couple of the Granny Smith apples and I, I ground them up pretty much finely with that. And it's okay if they turn brown because you're going to be using some dark spices that kind of make this look like apple butter. But I've got four cups here. We're going to put that in our casserole dish, dish like this, just like that, and I've got one fourth teaspoon of allspice. That goes right on in there. That gives it a nice flavor. And this is one teaspoon of cinnamon. And that goes right on in there. Now, this is our lemon juice that we made fresh. And I like to use the fresh lemon juice. And I strained it using the strainer. And I'm just going to get, let's see, two tablespoons out of that. One two tablespoons go right on into the apple mixture there we go and a secret ingredient to keep the foam down this just makes the it prettier is just a little half teaspoon of butter which has melted under the lights here in the trailer park case kitchen 
so we'll just kind of put that there. It kind of helps with the foam. You don't have to really add that yet, but you'll see the foam in a minute. It just makes your uh, baked goods look really better. Now I've got my spoon which I put in the boiling water and I've got that ready. It's just more sanitary that way. And I've got, this is one of those packages of fruit pectin. If you paid attention in science class, apples have a lot of pectin and it's okay. But um, what we're going to do is just add this box of fruit pectin right on in there. Just like that. And we're actually going to add... Um, this mixture up here in this casserole till it's boiling. So we need to make sure that this boils here. Helps if I pay attention. I forgot to tell you that you add the water too. One and one fourth cup of water. And this is what you bring up to boiling here. So let's just get this boiling. Okay, we're just waiting till our mixture really boils. And it's got to boil so much that when you stir it, it's got to keep boiling. So that's just a, a violent boil. And, you know, Dutch apple pies always have raisins in that. So we're going to add a half cup of raisins right on in there. So we're just going to wait till this boils, and I'll check back with you in just a moment. Okay, now we have a crazy boil that won't stop boiling when you stir it. Now we're going to add four cups of granulated sugar right on in there which I've got measured out and then I have one cup of light brown sugar um, that goes right on in there that I've packed and we're gonna stir this around and bring it back up to a violent boil and I'll check back with you in just a moment Okay, we've got the mixture back up to a scary boil, and we're going to be stirring this for about one minute of cooking time, so set your timer. Okay, we've been stirring and cooking for about a minute, and see all this foam? This doesn't make your actual product look real pretty, so you just take your spoon and take it off the top, and you can put this on toast or something. Don't throw it away. It sure does taste good. Some people just eat spoonfuls of it. Um, but we're just going to take the foam off the top because that won't look pretty in the jars. And I've turned the heat off and we're just going to have this on the side here while we get ready the can because that's the best part. We're getting ready to do that. So I'll check back with you in just a moment. Okay, let's get ready the can. Now, this is our jars in our canning pot that have been simmering while we've been getting the actual jam mixture together. And I'm lifting it up out of the pot to the second level. And they still have the hot water in there. And that's just okay because we're going to be pouring this hot jam mixture in there and we don't want them to break. And I've got my hot water mixture with my tongs here. And actually, you can buy all sorts of things like a jar lifter. This is a jar lifter here and you can actually lift the jars out with this. But what we're going to need to do is carefully without burning ourselves is lift out a jar, pour the water out and place it on the clean counter. So I'm going to lift the jar out with the jar lifter here and um, I'm not going to burn myself hopefully. Um, Pour the water back out into the pan, just like that. And now I'm going to place it on the counter. It's okay if you can't see that just yet. We're going to show a close-up in just a moment. Now, this is a funnel. You can get it in the kit that comes all together. They're not very expensive. It's a couple dollars. And this is called a magnetic lid lifter. We're going to be able to use this to lift the lids right out of the lid pot that we have there. And I've got that in my actual uh, glass where here with the boiling water. This right here pokes out the bubbles to make it look prettier. Push this is a fruit all around so it sits right. And it also has measurements up at the top so that it, um, it's usually either one fourth inch or one eighth inch. You can look it up. It's for low acid foods versus non acid foods. You need to look that up before you start experimenting with canning. Um, but this is the actual um, 
the funnel that we're going to be using. And um, I actually, I'm, I'm so used to holding dishes, we're going to use a, a towel here to show you. I'm going to put this, the funnel, right on top there. I've got my clean spoon, and I've got it right here. And I'm just going to stir the mixture here to make sure that it's well mixed throughout. And then I'm just going to start ladling it into the mixture here. Now, both of these things are hot. Luckily, we warmed up the jar so that nothing bad will happen when you pour the hot mixture in there. But be very careful so you don't burn yourself. Now, this recipe says that you want to fill it about one-eighth from the top. So, one-eighth inch. There we go. One-eighth. Probably about that is good. We're going to set this down on a clean area so that we can use it once again. I have a trivet that I use for that. Now, this is the thing that we're going to push around the fruit to make it look okay. There we go. Just distribute the fruit. Very careful. Now, this is getting really hot in my hand, so I'm going to have to hurry here with this demonstration. Now, I've got the magnetic lid lifter. I'm going to reach in to my hot water without touching the lid and then I'm going to place the lid right on top of the actual jar and let go of the magnet there. Wow, it's harder to do it on camera here. And then I'm going to reach over where I have my other tray here where I have the lids and um, I'm going to center the lid onto the jar and turn the jar lid on. I'm going to tighten it, but not really tighten it hard. So just kind of a loose tighten there. There we go. Now, I didn't get anything around the side of the jar. So if you did, you're going to have to use your actual towel and wipe around because you can't have anything on the actual lid. But if you're careful, you should be just fine. But um, don't slop it all over the place. So once I'm done with that, I'm going to set it right here and I'm going to grab the next one. So we're going to take the actual jar lifter Pour out the water again. There we go. Set that aside so I can grab all my tools again. And wrap my tail around the glass. I'm going to pick up my clean funnel off the trivet. Put it inside. Then I'm going to put the mixture right on in there to one eighth of an inch on the top. Just filling that up there. Look at those pretty raisins on in there. That's going to be so great. Reminds me of a nice Amish pie or even a Dutch apple pie. So that's up to the top there. We're going to lift this out carefully. Look at that. We did it almost there. We're going to have to use this to wipe around just a little bit because I, I got some on the side there. There we go. Because you really need to make sure that this has a great seal on it so it can't be sticky. It can't have any of the, the residue from the the actual um, funnel. Gonna get my lid lifter here and I'm gonna get the top and I'm gonna place that right there on top. And this does work better on the counter by the way but I'm just showing you and I messed up on that one so we're gonna get rid of that for a moment. And because I don't feel like oops see Canning is not too difficult, but you need to make sure that you have everything clean there. And it's okay. Don't, don't be nervous. 
it's okay if you get all fidgety, but you just have to keep things, let's put that on there like that, there we go. I just don't like touching it, and I'm scared I'm going to give somebody some sort of canning disease or something like that, which is probably not that possible. Um, but I'm reaching for the lid, a, a actual the jar seal ring, and I'm putting it on top there. And then I'm setting this aside. And I'm going to work through these, and I'll check back with you in just a moment to show you what else to do. Okay, we finished filling our jars with the mixture. Now we've got to kill off any bacteria that's in there and make sure that they seal. So what we're going to do is put them back into the canner very carefully, line them up all around here, and um, you're going to make sure the water is up to a violent boil again. And these are going to boil for about 10 to 12 minutes. So make sure that it's boiling when you start counting. But we're just going to line them all up, make sure that they're sitting real pretty right on in there. If they fall over, have your tongs ready, <clears throat> but we're just going to low them right on in there. Lower them. There we go. They're right on in there, and of course one falls over, so we're just going to have to move the tongs and save it. There we go. It's okay, you can just fidget with it until they all are sitting very nicely in the pot here. Because you're going to have to put the lid on. So set your timer for about 10 to 12 minutes. And I'll see you back in just a moment. Okay, it's been about 10 to 12 minutes and our filled jars have been boiling at a violent boil for about 10 to 12 minutes. And um, what I like to do is just turn it off and let them sit in there for another five minutes and I'll check back with you in just a moment. Okay, our jars have sat in the water an additional five minutes. I'm going to lift them up very carefully because that water is sure hot. And now we're just going to lift them up. Did you hear that pop? They're already sealing and that's just great. And I'm just going to lift them up out of there. Oh, there was another pop. And I'm going to put them over on the counter on a tail that I've actually put out. And these are going to sit 24 hours. Oh, there, that was just like a symphony. Did you hear that? Oh, there's another one. That's so exciting to hear because that means that we did that right. And they're going to be sealing just fine. And they're going to continue to do that. Um throughout the actual cooling down process and we're just going to grab them all out of there. Oops, very hot, careful. There we go. Now these have got to see up, but everybody's real excited to see what I've been working on because they've added me as a friend on Facebook and I'm Jolene Sugarbaker there, so be sure to add me there um, because I've been talking about canning and everybody, oh, there's another pop. There's a total of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven that we made here, even though we had 10 cans ready, just in case. Um, but I wanted to get this video out. Um, so um, I actually have some of the mixture here, and um, I can't wait. This will gel up in the jar just like a jam, and it'll be great on toast, or maybe, you remember I did those popovers? That would be so great. Oh, another pop. We've almost got all the pops, I think. Have you been counting? I can't. There was like three, four, five, almost all. But let me taste this. Mmm. Taste the cinnamon and the allspice. Got a little bit of the raisin there, too. And it kind of tastes like apple butter, but it tastes like a fresh apple pie. And... This sure is going to be great when you pop one open in the morning at breakfast time. They make great gifts too. And, and what you need to do the next day, this is my strawberry one that we made not long ago here in my trailer park test kitchen. I didn't make a video of it. But you need to make sure that they're sealed properly. So I took the lid ring off. And what I like to do is just hang on to the top there and make sure that that lid is on there perfectly and check 
to make sure that there's nothing growing on it. Pop this into your cabinet, into a cool area, and it's ready to go for like a year. Ready to be, uh, just ready and waiting for you. And when you start to use it, it's good for just like maybe some jelly that you've had for a few weeks at the store that you've opened up. You put it in the fridge. Um, but these make great gifts. I hope you do get a chance to can. I'm not an expert at this. If I made mistakes, put that in the comments down at the bottom. I'm glad to learn from you. I've learned so much from exciting people here on YouTube. Search out canning. I put some of my favorites down here at the bottom. I'll be back with some more cooking shows soon, so be sure to hit that big old subscribe button. I'm doing all sorts of things here inside the Trailer Park Test Kitchen. Follow me on Twitter. I'm Jolene's Trailer there. And now I just have to clean everything up. And let's take a look here. I can hold one with a pot holder before we go here. We can see what one looks like. Look at that. I know you're not supposed to touch it, but I just wanted to show you there. We'll show some pictures a little bit later. But I love y'all. You should try out canning. It's not that very hard at all. Just need to be real clean. Lots of recipes out there. They've been around for years, ancient times. And I'll see y'all back real soon. Visit me on the web at JoleneSTrailerPark.com for my recipes and contests and all sorts of stuff. I'll see you soon, and happy canning. Bye-bye. Slap on all your blue eye shadow. Watch out for that big tornado. Get all filled with Bye. pride in the double wide. Visit my store at trailerparkstore.com.